right, let's get started. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 alumni sharing for the HKUSD School of Business and Management. I'm so glad to see so many of you here today interested in learning more about HKUSD and more importantly, what life is like during and after a business course here. So thank you all for being here. Before we begin, I just want to give you a little taste of what you can expect during today's session. So to begin with, we're going to introduce all of the wonderful alumni and students we have here today and hear from them just a little of what their life was like during HKUSD and what they're up to now. After that, we'll dive straight into answering some of the questions that you've submitted today before, before today's session. And don't worry if you weren't able to submit your burning questions as we'll take some time afterwards to answer any other program or career related questions that you may have. Finally, you'll also get the wonderful opportunity to meet directly with our SBM admission officers to ask any of your admission specific or admission related questions. So let's get started. Chris, over to you. Thank you, Tasneem. So we are glad to have four of our alumni here today with us. They are Elrika, uh, majoring in Accounting and Operations Management, Gracia, majoring in Information Systems and Finance, Seth, uh, majoring in Marketing and Entrepreneurship, and lastly, we have Tony, who is majoring in Ecom, Economics and Finance. So thank you all four speakers again for taking your time to share your thoughts and experiences with all of us here today in this session. So without further ado, Let's start off by asking all of you to share more about your own majors, since the burning question will always be, is this major right for you? Perhaps we can start off with Elrika, then Gracia, Seth, and then Tony. So Elrika, feel free to share with us some memorable things about your own studies. So um, hi, everyone. So I'm actually a current student. I'm a third year student in HKUSD Business School, and I'm majoring in accounting and operations management. And I'm one of like the uh, most memorable thing about DUSD is that the opportunity it gave me. So like last year, I actually got an opportunity to um, work in a company in Singapore. Um, I got the offer and I got the opportunity from like the HKUSD Career Center and it really helped me to find like those kind of opportunities, which is really great, especially for students who might not know about um, like job openings and all. And I'm pursuing accounting at the moment as my first major and also operations management. And I chose accounting because first of all, um, I'm not that great at like memorizing stuff. So I prefer doing like numbers and all. So, um, and actually like studying counting is not boring. It's not like what other people think. And it's very useful, especially in like um, for, it's like the foundation of like a business because like um, it, with like accounting, you can tell the business performances and you can actually learn a lot of things about a business. That's why I'm pursuing accounting at the moment. Yeah, thank you. That's all from me, Chris. Okay, then we can have Gracia, yeah. Sure, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Gracia. My first major is information system, second major in finance. Uh, why I choose information system and finance is because I also like, I don't really like memorizing stuff. I like more conceptual uh, data related. So a bit about information system. I didn't know about the major before I went into USD. Uh, so information system is kind of like computer science. You learn a bit about programming, data, system. But in information system, it's more about um, how to apply those technology to real life cases or business practices. So we focus more on the framing the problem before we jump into the solution. So we, we are asked and we are trained to think systematically and also work in group. And for finance, the dif difference between finance and quantitative finance is that finance is not as quantitative. I mean, not focusing too much on the math side, but more on uh, say valuing an asset, uh, m and IPO. And I think the similarity of those two major is that I get to apply the theory into the project, uh, group project. And my favorite class in IS is a data mining course. 
and in finance is a financial technology class. So in both class, I need to work with a team to apply uh, the theory, say, uh, how to use the machine learning in financial data and how to gain insights from there. What are the common errors? So that are the things that I enjoy a lot and why I choose my major. Okay, then we can move on to Seth. Uh, maybe we can also share more about uh, what the major exactly studies. Yeah, just to clarify things. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, so hi guys, I'm Seth. I graduated 2018. I am now working in Lala Move. Um, so if the the competitor of Google Van is basically Lala Move in Hong Kong. For those who are not familiar, um, I did a major in marketing and I minored in entrepreneurship. I chose these majors because um, I felt like it was the most suitable to me. So unlike Erica and Gracia, I'm not very good with numbers. So instead I did more of like a project-based presentation style classes. And so in marketing, that's a lot of that. So instead of uh, final exams, there'll be a lot of project work. There'll be a lot of presentations in front of the class. And mostly those presentations will be about case studies or how to improve branding um, of a certain company, a real life company, um, or different cases that the professor will be giving us. For entrepreneurship, um, that was personally my favorite part um, of the studies in UST, just because it was very hands-on. So I remember one of the classes we did, uh, we were given a mission to go and earn as much money as possible in two hours. And so our team actually went around campus taking headshots for people and charging them $20 for it. And so our team won uh, with zero cost. We won about $200 in two hours. And um, that was a very good exercise of um, basically telling us what entrepreneurship is really about. And so my personal goal in life is to be able to start my own company soon. Um, and that's why I'm kind of working on these startups to be able to gain some experience and see what works and what doesn't. So yeah, that's it for me, thank you. Okay, thank you. Before we move on to Tony, uh, I see some questions in the chat box already. So from Romila, uh, so uh, she asked, or, Yes, how, how much math is required for the information systems major? So maybe uh, I think Gracia can answer that. So for uh, IS, there's not too much math. So what we will learn is basic statistics, basic programming, but all of them are covered in uh, IS courses. So you don't have to have a like previous understanding uh, too much in math. Okay, okay. Then uh, the next question is actually about ECOF. So let's move on to Tony first. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so uh, I was studying in uh, ECOF, Economics and Finance, um, like a few years ago. And uh, what I can conclude or summarize is uh, studying in HKUS Business School is all about opportunities. You got a lot of opportunities on studying what you want, uh, going to exchange on, uh, on the places that are uh, beyond Asia, and then you can get a lot of opp interesting opportunities uh, in different industries. So I've been got internship in working in Disney, and then I was working full time in Cafe Pacific in several departments. And then now I'm studying um, Master of Data Science in the UK. So uh, the courses in ECLF is more quantitative, as more math driven. So we got a lot of math, we got some specific course on uh, learning the mathematics for uh, applying all uh, those calculations or uh, on some economics model. And um, obviously we learn macroeconomics and microeconomics and also learning about the statistics, the, uh, how, to, how to make a, a statistical model to, uh, to, uh, to, to present or to, to prove some of the, uh, the, the business problem, social problem by using these models. So the, the structures of the courses are like that. So uh, studying in, ECLF gives you a lot of exposures on uh, different areas uh, in business, in statistics, in mathematics and economics, and together with a lot of opportunities in exchange and internship. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So there are already a lot of questions popping up in the chat and uh, we'll try to address them as we go because there are still a lot of pre-collected questions that we think are very interesting. So Tasneem can move on with, yeah, to the question. Wow, so we're all coming from insanely different majors. But that was always one of my favorite parts about HKUST that, you know, you could go into HKUST, you go into the School of Business Management, and there's so many different opportunities for you to go about studying in. 
but I'm interested and I'm sure everybody else here is interested in as well. Where are you now? Like where has life taken you since graduation or if for our students here currently, where do you expect life to take you after graduation in regards to your career? So Seth, why don't you start us, start us off? Sure, thank you, Tasneem. Uh, so after I graduated, I actually spent some time traveling. So I spent about three months traveling around Panama, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Costa Rica. I joined one of the humanitarian aid ships and we went around different ports and uh, we stopped in each port for about a month and we did different uh, social work on the shore and on the ship itself. So that was really fun. And then I came back to Hong Kong without a job. And so I spent about a month and a half looking for a job, uh, ended up working for Deliveroo um, for about a year and a half. Um, so I understand the pains of not getting your food on time and like getting the wrong food or getting the rude drivers. I, I have dealt with that. So don't worry, I feel you but that's not my problem anymore <laughs> because I moved on to Lala Move recently. Uh, I am now working in the Lala Move headquarters um, because Lala Move is a Hong Kong company. Uh, I am looking after driver retention right now. So it is a, a, a step up and it's a good learning opportunity. So that's where I am right now. Awesome. And Gracia, how about you? So now I'm working in uh, banking. I'm working in Citibank Indonesia management trainee program in the trading floor. And it might sound straightforward, like an IS and finance student uh, being in a bank. But my journey, I, I'm in more interested in technology. That's why I declare IS as my first major. I went for exchange uh, in first in Silicon Valley and then again back to California in San Diego. And I went for internship in two technology startup, one in Hong Kong and one in Asia. So uh, what I think looking back at my HKUST journey, I'm quite grateful to have the opportunity to try things out. And from there, I learned about what I like what, and what I don't. And now I'm working in, a, in trading floor. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> How about you, Tony? Yeah, I, yeah, I got internship in Disney um, in final year working in the revenue management analytics. It's uh, looking at the, how the uh, the performance of the revenue in different um, in different uh, spectrum, and then so I feel like uh, I really like to handling the data using data and uh, to analyze uh, the the company performance. So. After that, I went to, uh, after I graduated, I got a job in cafe and then looking at the revenue performance, looking at the data, and then I got promoted to, to look at the cargo with a team to manage a team to, uh, to look at the, the performance of cargo revenue and look at the system. So after spending four years in three, three to four years in cafe, I feel like I want to take a step further on learning data science data related subjects. So I, I'm in the UK right now to study um, data science. Yep, that's my that's my journey after awesome. US. Thank you guys for sharing. But Elrica, you're a student currently, right? Yeah. How about you? Where do you where do you see yourself after you graduate? Um, for me, I'm actually very interested in working as like an accountant. It's very obvious that I'm aiming for the big four. Um, and I've been applying for internships this summer. But one of like the most memorable internship I had was in the, the one I mentioned before, the one in Singapore. So I work in a fintech company and I get to learn um, a lot about financial technology because I'm also majoring in accounting and OM. So I think it's quite related. And um, I get to see like, for example, the difference between like my home country fintech industry and like Singapore fintech industry and also Hong Kong fintech industry, which I find very interesting. Yeah. Wow. All right. So my oh my, we all went to the exact same university. We ended up studying very different majors and all of us ended up in different industries, different companies, different job roles or expecting to be in different industries. I can definitely see the wealth of possibilities and opportunities here. But let's dive straight into some of those pre-collected questions from everyone here today. 
So as I mentioned at the beginning of today's session, we did collect questions from everybody. And so we'll take some time now to let our alumni and our students answer those questions. Um, and just a quick reminder, if you do have any other questions, feel free to post them in the chat below. I see we've already got um, a lot of questions already. So we'll answer all of those very shortly. Um, and another reminder that this session, we are focused on life at HKUSD and after. So if you've got any admission related or any admission specific questions, you can save on to or hang on to those for the next session after this. All right, so on to the first question. And this is for anybody. Uh, what unique experiences have you done or have you had in your business course? Mm, can I say exchange opportunities? Um, yeah. Is, is, is beyond the academics, but uh, it's the exchange opportunities. Uh, because when I was, uh, because when I was still a high school student, I, I was literally attending the HKUST uh, alumni, uh, these kind of sessions uh, in HKUST. And they, uh, the, 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 the alumni or the graduate students, they, what they share about me is the experience to spend a semester uh, in overseas, yeah, in the United States or UK, Canada, Australia, or anywhere uh, in the world. So we, we have pretty strong connections. We have more than a hundred, I'm not sure the exact numbers. We at least, I sh at least more than 50 schools or more than hundred, I'm not sure there's numbers uh, for the schools that you can choose to, uh, to go to, to spend one semester uh, to, to study ab abroad. And, re and it uh, it's really a unique experience for me because uh, uh, I'm a little bit, I, I may be a little bit different. So I, I never been to um, uh, United States before when, when I was in, before I, I, I studied in, uh, in college. I never been to United States. So I, I, I went there to take a look, to study there and meet friends and to see um, the, a different culture experience. And this is a really unique experience that um, I still are really thankful on the opportunity that I was given um, to go to the United States for exchange because it really changed my whole perspective uh, looking on the world, uh, understand the, the importance of diversities, uh, importance of um, getting different um, perspective on, on, on life. So I would say exchange opportunity is one of the, one of the edge or one of the unique experience that I got when I was in the HKUST. Adding on to that, uh, exchange is definitely a memorable experience. My, I myself went to one summer exchange and also uh, spring semester, so six months exchange. And that I think I echo uh, Tony that it's one of the strengths of HKUST Business School with that, uh, that we have a partnership with a lot of schools and it's, it's easier, I would say, to adapt to uh, different schools after having been in USD. And in addition to that, I think for classes, what I appreciate is that we get to choose. There are a lot of flexibility in choosing the classes that we like uh, because the specific experience will definitely be different. What kind of classes do you like? But you can choose, even let's say in uh, a major in IS, I, there are a few electives that I can choose. So I, I choose the one that is more quantitative, more data driven. And on top of that, I can also choose the classes outside of my major or even outside of my school. So I remember I wanted to learn uh, more about programming. So I actually take a computer science class from engineering school. So I, I think flexibility is uh, another strength that USD has. Yeah, I saw so Jess post the link is more than uh, as near, more, more than 100, uh, 140 exchange partners in over 40, 40 countries. And, <laughs> Uh, in, in, in America and North America in Europe. So yeah, you can click the link to see. Um, and if there's some sh student sharing profile in the link, I, I probably guess. So yeah, yep. Okay. Thank you for your great answer. So let's move on to your other questions because there are a lot of uh, live questions yep. from the audience. Okay, so uh, next question is, what courses do we need to take in business majors and what jobs can we choose with a business degree? So it's a pretty general question. Uh, feel free to answer, yeah. Uh, I would so, come here and say um, that actually it doesn't really matter what major you take because working for two years now, um, I realized that it's really about the skills that you have and the attitude that you have towards the job. And so as long as you can show the employer that your skills and your, your ability and your attitude fits the role, 
it doesn't really matter what major you take. And especially with HKUST as such um, a great name for employers, like I personally, when, when I walk around the office, sometimes um, they would come to me and ask me like, oh, like, is that, is that person from HKUST as well? And then we'll, we'll be like, yeah, like, how did you know? And then they, they will just kind of say that, oh, there's just something different about them. You know, like they're just more active, they're more hands-on, they're more like taking initiative. And so I think people do realize a difference. Um, and I remember working in one of the uh, banks for an internship, you know, during my second year as well. Um, and this was literally what they, they came up to me and said like, oh, like it really seems like there is a difference between you guys. Um, and yeah, I think it's also built on the hard work that everyone, uh, all the alumni have built you know, out there in the business world. And um, they have really set a really good reputation for us to be able to find a good job afterwards. All right, so um, I'm seeing a lot of questions in the chat about GBUS, so I think we'll take that question next. Um, so I think, Chris, you are a student in GBUS, am I correct? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, so can you share a little bit with us about what GBUS is like? Can you do a double major in GBUS and in marketing, for example, and also what it's like in the first year for a GBUS student or after the first year? Right, so I guess the common stigma or like the, the common th thinking about GBUS as a major is you get more employability. So that's a, we, we, we've addressed the elephant in the room right now, but uh, I like to add on to that to say that um, the, the most unique thing about GBUS is definitely the community that you build inside of USD, because as you know, if you join a, a general major like um, finance, I'm not saying those majors are bad, just that you don't have a specific community to uh, seek assistance from, uh, seek advice. Uh, and then uh, I, I know that uh, in the first place, the reason I got into GBUS is because I made, I, I, I was friends with one of the GBUS majors and he just offered like, infinite like, assistance to me when I was applying for the major itself. Uh, he just looked at my CV, even gave me a look at his uh, personal statement. So that that is like the best part of uh, GBUS. A lot of employment opportunities comes from uh, GBUS alumni themselves. And I think the professors are also, they, they go above and beyond to make sure that you uh, get a lot of knowledge from the industry itself. For example, for one of the courses, uh, uh, a professor from McKinsey is actually our current uh, professor who's also doing MBA at UST. So that, you know, that sounds really practical because it really is. And yeah, it, GBUS is a very practical course when it comes to employability and it's almost at the core of UST's own values. Yeah, that's it. And oh, oh uh, just to address the double major question, and there's a, a lot more like GBUS related questions, but uh, yes, you can double major. You can, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you can double major in GBUS and let's say ECOF, because ECOF itself is a pretty big major. They don't want you to overload, but for other majors such as marketing, accounting and others, uh, perfectly fine. Yeah, just go for that. That's why I went for information systems, yeah. All right, and then the next question, and this is again for everybody. So when and how did you realize what you want to study or your particular major was exactly what you wanted for a university? Um, I'll answer that question. So I joined HKUST without um, any major. So like um, I came to UST with this from like the school based program. And I was still pretty clueless back then. Like, I didn't know what to um, study. I don't know what to pursue. But then in my, our first year, we we're supposed to take um, different major courses, like the introduction to like different um, majors. And what caught my attention was um, the accounting course. And during my second year, I took the ISOM 2700, which is the OM introduction co uh, course. And actually like, um, it's very interesting that I really want to pursue further. And that's what makes it different, I think, because we get to have like a little taste of what the major is about before like delving into the major itself. I think that's like the moment when I know what to pursue in the future. 
that's really interesting because I remember in my first year I also took that accounting course and I am not a lover of math I am the complete opposite and I fell in love with accounting at that moment I didn't end up choosing it but it was still really enjoyable so that's interesting okay yeah so definitely you do get a lot of opportunities to figure out what you actually want through a, uh, through both common courts as well as business course uh, courses. Yeah. So let's move on to the next question, uh, which is how many minors could I have? And uh, can a business school student have, let's say, computer science, applied math, or even statistics as minors? Yeah. So I guess I took a minor, so I can I can take that question. Um, theoretically, you can do as many minors as you would like. At least that was it back in the day. I'm not sure if you just can jump in if I'm wrong, but it all depends on how you kind of fix your schedule. And so I was actually considering between entrepreneurship, aerospace engineering, um, and I think mechanical design, something like that uh, as my minor. I ended up choosing entrepreneurship just because I, I feel like it was the most enjoyable one. Um, sometimes it, it can be difficult um, to be able to complete a minor when you don't have the basic knowledge in, uh, in that field. And um, I'd say if you're interested in minor, you can go and explore the Common Core courses first and see if that's really for you. Uh, and once you kind of get a grip of it or you really, really like it, then yeah, by all means, go ahead, do like an aerospace engineering minor, um, which is also one of the flexibilities of HKUSC in the first place. So, so yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. It is completely flex flexible in terms of like the things that you want to study. You can kind of craft your own pathway. And that's one of the best points about UST, in my opinion. But on to the next question. So since HKUST is relatively far away from the center of Hong Kong, um, in terms of how that affects your internship experience, is it still okay to find appropriate internship opportunities? Or did the HKUST career team have to assist you? Um, or did you kind of were you able to find internship opportunities for yourselves what's that experience kind of been like oh, i can answer the questions <laughs> uh splitting two parts uh, the first one is the transportation problem but it's not a problem at all because hong kong is relatively smaller than just british small and you can simply take a minibus from from our campus to the to the to the, to the nearest subway stations for around 20 minutes and then you can go to anywhere by subway by, by subway and the second part is about the finding internship so the, the transport is not a problem uh, in Hong Kong it's not a problem uh, second part is uh, the internship opportunities so split it split, split it into two uh, two, uh, two two perspectives to look at first one is I'm pretty sure that HKUST career center we have a career center provide advice on your CVs for uh, writing personal statement and also how uh, to discuss with you uh, Understand, help you to understand the strength and weakness of yourself, which kind of industry or which kind of job that um, it, uh, you apply. By co because I, I always have a consultation sessions with, with the career team. I still have connections with the career team right now. They, yeah, they give you a lot of advice or consultations during, uh, during the journey. So don't worry about that. Uh, remember, just uh, bear in mind that uh, in college so if you have any problem just send an email or just find a way to contact the staff they, they are willing to help so that's the that's what i say is at attitude first or the mindset first it's not about the skills it's about the attitude and mindset you got questions summarize it send an email to contact them they will figure it out okay the second part is the internship opportunities they uh there's some we have alumni so we can have connections the career center can can have some connections to help you to uh, apply those internship opportunities. And they have some main uh, internship opportunities in mainland China. I, I, I joined that when I was in year two, I joined a summer internship in Shanghai. It's organized by the Career Center. They have connections with some companies in mainland China. That's great. That's, that, that's, you can apply for that. Okay, and then the last part is you can apply uh, any opportunity, internship opportunities on, other, on the company websites. By yourself, and then you can you can have a have a progress check with the career advisor and ask them for advice. Yeah, and this yeah that did I answer the questions um, on that? I kind of want to jump yeah. in a bit on that um, as well because I think my experience of finding my internship was quite different 
Um, so there are multitude of things that you can do to get yourself an internship. So there are regular um, career fairs on campus itself. And so every half a year or so, HKUST will invite over you know, a few hundred companies and come over to the atrium and they'll have a booth to be able to connect you with the HR. And so that it's really like bring the companies to the university itself. And then you can speak to them to see what kind of people they're looking for or what opportunities are open. So that's a really big thing that you can find internships from. Another thing is because um, as, you know, as, as Tony has mentioned, like there's like, there's so many companies that know of HKUST already. And there are also a lot of alumni out there who is also starting uh, startups and really famous companies it is not difficult to get an internship. And internships are a very, very big part of HKUST culture. Um, at one point, I felt a little bad for not going for an internship during a holiday, um, but, but it was a very valuable experience. And uh, just, just to mention that like HKUST also has a very long uh, winter holiday. I think we have close to two months for the winter holiday. So you can definitely leverage on that and do like a short-term internship. So I actually worked in a FinTech company in Hong Kong called NEAT. Um, and I worked there for two months full time um, during the holidays, and that was a really good experience. And uh, on the transportation bit, I think this question comes from someone who is not from Hong Kong, but that's fine. <laughs> because once you come to Hong Kong, you realize yeah. how easy it is. Um, yeah. You fit in multiple meetings in one day. You can get so much done in a day. And we have one yeah. of the best train systems in the world, so don't worry about that. Yeah, don't don't buy a car. Don't buy a car. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Don't, don't buy a car. Don't buy a car. We, you buy a toy car, it. but not a real car. <laughs> yeah, I don't don't buy it. Yeah. I actually yeah. have one more thing to add. Like I think Seth, you mentioned like about the career fairs, and I think that's a really big thing about UST. So like the internship that I got, for example, I got from one of the startup fairs, which is another fair that UST puts on specifically for startup companies. Um, and so over there, I actually got to meet the founder of this company that I'm now and ended up working full time for. So you can really be build and cultivate those relationships through those HKUST career fairs, because it's such a valuable opportunity to actually meet with direct members of that company who then actually remember you when you're submitting your application. So it's actually a really cool thing. And I really, really love that part. Yeah. And I think also um, a few people have asked, like, if it's easy to get an internship if you can't speak Mandarin or Cantonese as well. So I actually cannot speak Cantonese or Mandarin, um, and I was still able to find internships. Um, I think it just depends on the type of company that you are applying for, the type of industry and the type of role that you're going for. So for example, like for me, I ended up going into more like startup companies who are really like who had like international kind of audiences. So like they weren't looking necessarily for people that could only focus on the Hong Kong market, but rather on global markets and things like that. So I don't think it's impossible. It may be a little bit more difficult, but at the end of the day, you'll be able to find a company that I think you would really like yeah. to work for. Yeah. yeah. I, I have one point to add on this. Um, I mean, yeah, you can, I, I mean, you can, you, you still have four years to learn it, or I'm not, you can still learn a little bit Mandarin or, because if it, it's about the mindset and attitude and also the, the ultimate goal of studying. After you're studying, we are about talking about uh, after study, we work or study postgraduate, but uh, location is, is, is an important factor. So if you want to stay in Hong Kong or China in in next 10 years, for example, then you, you at least you have to learn a little bit Mandarin or Cantonese, how to interact with the people, not just in professional, uh, in a professional workplace, in locally in, uh, in, in your life, in spend, spending time in Hong Kong or China, you, you need to learn a little bit Mandarin too. Like Cantonese to communicate. So I would say uh, you still have four years to to learn that. Don't don't stress on that. And I'm pretty sure that UST HKUST got language support um, uh, for 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 us. So don't don't worry about that. Uh, just 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 try to learn it. Uh, understand a little bit of that. Then to will will we'll expand your your opportunities. Yeah. I'd like to jump in on this because uh, I look local, but I'm from Indonesia. <laughs> so I got mistaken a lot uh, for that. I do speak very little Mandarin uh, at home back in Indonesia, but then not sufficient for working proficiency. But I would say uh, I totally agree that if you really want to work in a sales role that bad, you need to utilize that four year to learn. I did take a basic Cantonese class and I think it's not impossible to be able to speak the language, although it's not easy. Uh, especially yeah. if you don't have a background before. But other than that, uh, in my two internships, 
uh, I, I'm not required to speak Mandarin uh, or Cantonese um, because Hong Kong is a very international yes. place where say in my uh, internship in, with HSBC, I was with the regional team and my team consists of six people. No, no, none of them are local. So mm -hmm. my boss is from India, one from US, one from UK. It's a mix and a, a diverse team. Um, so yeah, I guess it's it's totally not a hindrance unless uh, you really want to be in, in a very sales role. Mm -hmm. well, that's a lot of knowledge about <laughs> applying for jobs in Hong Kong. And I do definitely agree with the international aspect of Hong Kong. Like uh, last year I joined an internship at Meltwater. Uh, some of you might have heard about it, but uh, they do have a lot of people from Shanghai in Hong Kong working right now, and they were just really, really friendly with uh, introducing me to more Mandarin terms that you can use in the sales role. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's all good. Hong Kong definitely like facilitates that sort of like knowledge uh, building when it comes to languages. Yeah, and then let's since since we're we're on the topic of jobs, let's uh, talk about a very common question, which is how many internships and extracurricular activities are ideal for having a strong CV. So I guess I can quickly address this. So uh, your question essentially uh, boils this down, uh, this, this question essentially boils it down to a quantity for how many internships do I have to be in? I'd say that, um, it, I wouldn't say it's the wrong way to look at it, but I think ultimately when you get into the interview, you need to show that you really digested what you've learned from the internships uh, rather than you know spill about how many internships I've done, how many achievements uh, I've gone through and all of that. So they want to learn more about you um, instead of uh, what you've done just purely from your CV. You have to do a lot of the talk talking when it comes to the interview itself. Yeah, others can share. I guess don't just tick the box that you have that much of uh, internship. Even if you like traveling, you can also do traveling or volunteering. It's not necessarily only internship, but do something meaningful, something that you enjoy. I remember in one of the interview, uh, in the final interview for my full-time job, I was asked about uh, a difficulty that I faced and how I overcame it. I remember the story that I tell them is about my roommate, because I live in a triple room in our first year, and we have a lot of uh, differences and how I cope with the situation. So I guess it's more important on how you express and um, you express your learning, what you've learned from university, from being a, say, a peer mentor, student ambassador. It can be anything, not limited to only internships. Yeah, that's definitely true. So let's move on to some more career related questions. I know we've already touched on it a little bit, but we can dive deeper. So what do you guys think are the key factors that determine if a multinational company is going to hire you among other graduates? I think Tony raised a really good point just now, uh, saying that exchange opportunities are really important. Um, I went to France for exchange and I traveled a lot. Like basically every weekend I was traveling to seeing like new places around Europe. And that really helped me gain exposure and to have an insight of different cultures, you know, around around Europe. And so for multi multinationals, I think they're always looking for someone who is mature, who has the experience, um, who has the cultural sensitivity and different perspectives that you can offer to a task. Because so often, like, for example, in my company right now, we are dealing with about 22 cities around the world. So we're not just dealing with Asian markets anymore. We're looking at Latin markets, USA, India, um, all across Southeast Asia as well. And so that cultural sensitivity and that, you know, that, that sense that, that comes along with it is really important to kind of bring that along with you to multinationals especially. And um, I think this is how you can make yourself stand out from the locals. Um, you need to have that perspective, that experience, uh, language is important. Um, but most, uh, most importantly, like as many of us have shared here, is an attitude behind it. Like if you're willing to learn, willing to understand, willing to experience it, I think you will get there one day. Okay, then let's move on to the next question, which is uh, what are the job placements like for uh, business graduates? And I, I'm not sure if this question is necessarily about like, uh, like job prospects right now. And especially in COVID, there's a de definitely a burning question. But if 
it were about employability, I would say that don't worry. I think HQSD students are doing relatively well. And uh, just looking at the whole uh, landscape itself, um, it's not necessarily that people are pulling out a budget from hiring and all of that. Just don't worry about that. Just focus on uh, uh, understanding what you want to excel in, what you're most passionate in. And I think that's all that matters. And it just slowly builds your way into a career you love. Yep. And also, like, just to jump in, like, I, I'm sure the landscape four years later is going to be very different from today. And so I understand that we are in a very sad time right now. And uh, you would have a lot of the worries um, in the back of your head. But to look for in the future, I'm sure four years later will be much better. I mean, we're kind of at rock bottom right now, so it can't get any worse, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I, I would say, I would say, uh, again, attitude, mindset, and you have four years to to think uh, as uh, saying that the first year is like an introductory to every uh, majors. Taste it, try to try different things uh, to see uh, which areas of business you want to tap into. That's that's a big thing. Uh, uh, and then yeah, it's, it's try to spend the first year uh, to taste uh, the different courses, the introductory courses and you find your weight and then slowly build yourself. That's, that's the key point, be patient and slowly build yourself then you can you can see the difference on yourself uh, before uh, studying uh, in college and after studying in uh, in college. You can see the difference on no matter on the skills, on the attitude, on the mindset, and sense on different things. It's about the experience. So uh, we never know what happened next in four years or five years. But what we can do is to keep improving ourselves. So, but you have to first spend the first year to understand what do you like and what you don't like, and then if you already make oh i can take all the introductory course and i like that so in second year third year you build yourself on that direction then then you can slowly build it and you become a really fruitful journey in the four years that's that's the approach that i i was taking when i was in hkust yeah. no i think that i think that's super accurate <laughs> i think another thing like to add on is mainly like with job placements like don't get also like too like pigeonholed by your specific major so like i did marketing and management I don't necessarily think that there is a specific job that you're supposed to have after you finish a marketing and management degree. So like I went into customer success, didn't even know that that was a job prospect to be very certain, um, to be very accurate, um, but it was. And so I went into that. And so it's more about like learning the skills that you get from the majors that you're learning and the courses that you're taking and then finding jobs that match that skill set as well. So uh, I think uh, like... In yeah. Yeah. I, I have one little tricks or tips. You, if you really want to uh, feel the sense on um, on on the jobs opportunities or the placement the industry, just create a LinkedIn account and then go, then search the jobs, and then reverse engineering. You look at some job title you want to. Oh, I want to do it in two years or three years in year two or year three, and then we still have two years ahead, and then reverse engineering it. It's like. Uh, what majors does it require? What skill set? What mindset? What attitude do you require? And then you build up your reverse engineering. But don't, I, I, I would say, don't stress on that too much right now because you, you, you may not even understand the job descriptions literally without any introductory courses uh, in the first year. So, yeah, I, I would take it as an approach on that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people are probably wondering about like employability this year with COVID and everything. And yeah, okay, it, it's, it's definitely harder this year. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I graduated this year as well. So I mm. was put straight into that. Um, and it was a little bit tougher. So like some companies did stop their hiring or they did hiring freezes. Um, but I think it's more about like, if anything, it's taught me more about like persistence um, and just keep on trying, you know, uh, don't like lose hope, don't give up and yeah, it's like built up self-confidence as well. So I was really lucky that I did get my full-time position and I'm really enjoying myself where I am now. And it, if anything, you know, it helps you kind of like filter through all the companies that you are applying to and really finding the one that you actually enjoy because you're having to do like all of these applications as well. Yep. So speaking of getting a job in Hong Kong, is it actually challenging to get a job in Hong Kong or is an MBA necessary? And do you have any tips for first year students to plan for their future career? I think we touched, I think Tony, you touched on that a little bit um, about the tips and things. But uh, I'll, I'll have one little uh, tip or advice or I, I, I guess uh, admission, admission team or 
uh, the staff will know about better. Uh, I mean, if you're international students, uh, look at the visa requirement or the, the postgraduate visas, definitely take a look on that. And for local students, then don't worry about that because you can legally to work here. So just uh, just, uh, uh, just ask uh, the, the staff in HJUSTs about the visas, issues or visas, the policy on that, then you can figure out the limitations on part-time jobs during studying, uh, during semester break, the limitations on work and you, you will figure it out Yeah, as an international student, yeah. Uh, I'd like to add on that because I graduated six months earlier, uh, mm. so three and a half years. So I decided to do uh, six months of working before my full-time work in Indonesia. I did go through the visa process and I would say that HCUS is also very helpful. Uh, just email the team and then they will tell you what to do, uh, what form to fill and so on. And I also see a questions about doing part-time. So I also did part-time both on campus and off campus. So on campus, it's easier. You don't have to apply for extra visa. Um, like there's a limitation, like one week, 20 hours or something, but yeah. it's very reasonable. The purpose is to make sure that you actually uh, put some time to your study as well. Uh, I did a part-time in library and I also did one uh, part-time outside of school because I went for the summer internship in my second year and they asked me to continue as a part-time. So Again, I talked to the business school, um, just submitting a few forms and administrative stuff, and everything is fine. I mean, you, you still can do a part-time if that fits your schedule. Yeah, again, it's, it's, uh, it's actively communicate with, with the staff in HKST, and they will figure it out. They will figure it out. They will figure it out for you. No, no worries on that. Yeah, yeah. I think also touching on the point of connections, um, it's important uh, to be able to be aware of what's happening around the world and in different industries, especially the industry that you're interested in. I think personally, that's how I build connections and all these connections can always be very useful in the future. And so they can either be your mentor, they can either end up be your boss, or they sometimes they're gonna be a founder of some startup that they might end up hiring you like Tasneem did. Um, so I personally spend a bit of time reading about uh, interesting news or just on Facebook, subscribe to a lot of like new channels or different perspectives, right? And so when you meet that person, say you meet that person um, who is an operations manager in Deliveroo, right? If you have a chance to meet him, then you would have some background knowledge to be able to chat with him and to build a sense of commonality. And so that will make yourself stand out. Like he's gonna remember that, oh, this guy knows his stuff or it seems like he knows his stuff, right? And so you kind of make a bit better impression in him. And so when sometime, well, sometime down the line in the future, when they have an opportunity, they might message you on LinkedIn or when you put in an application, they'll remember you for sure. So that's some of the tips that you can kind of start doing now um, is to be able to have a little knowledge and everything. Okay, thank you for that question. And then another burning question is, uh, is HKUST Business School a target school of top tier uh, investment banking or uh, consulting firms? So uh, I'll quickly address this. So um, if, if you look at a specific majors, for example, uh, global business, definitely the ratio of um, people who are going to investment banks or consulting firms is very, very high, but I'm not too sure about other majors. And you shouldn't have this mindset of limiting yourself to, uh, even, even if HKUST was a target firm for uh, target school for these firms, you should still uh, keep your options open, keep your mind open, and then just pursue the uh, passion you really want to go for. Yeah, others can chime in with other majors, yeah. Yeah, I would say look at the rankings of HAUST and yeah, and no, I, when, when I was still in the HAUST, most of the investment banks, they, they will have recruitment talks in our school. So um, it's one of the top schools in, in Hong Kong. So yeah, you, I mean, you, the HAUST will, uh, the, the name of HAUST will, will, will definitely help you, but not because, will, will not make, make the situation worse. So just don't worry about that. And, Again, it's what Chris saying that's about experience. It's what you gain in the, in, in, in the four years in HJUSD. That's how to differentiate with uh, other candidates, in the, uh, job candidates on that particular job or at that particular company's internship. So think about uh, the, the, the exposures, the experience that you want to achieve or you want to gain in the four years is more important uh, than, than the than the name of HKUST, yeah. 
I'll, yeah. I'll put it and there. I also, yeah, 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 thank you, Tony. And I also add on to say that it's very rare for any of the students who get a very straight career pathway to, like, let's say, banking. So they do like internships in banking all four years and all of that. It doesn't usually work like that. You have to uh, go to other firms uh, that you're interested in and just go and just experience what it is to work under different situations and also different industries. And then you carry that industry knowledge with you into other interviews to show that you have like reflected a lot and you are the right candidate for the firm you're applying to. Yeah. I also want to say for banking, um, there are many case competitions that happen on campus. And so I personally went to one of the case competitions um, by a Malaysian bank. And so um, it was three rounds of case competition. And in the end, they sent us to Malaysia for the final round of case competition for about 10 days. It was the hardest 10 days I've ever had. Um, they, they put us through like crazy and hell and a lot of work and working overnight and doing mock-up um, M&A proposals and press releases and conferences. But that was one of also the one of the best 10 days of my life um, in my academic years. Um, and that also ended up giving me a glance into the banking industry itself because I, I ended up working in that bank for about four months um, part time. Um, and it kind of made me realize that I was not made for banking. <laughs> so if you think you know banking right now, um, I don't think you would really know until you've really tried it. So go ahead and try it first. Um, so even when you are doing, going for your interviews in real life for your, for your full-time job and the employer asks you like, why do you decide not to go for banking? You can actually tell them why and you can tell them your experience. It's not about you know, whether or not you really end up in banking, but it's about discovering like what you really want and your experiences of positive and negative and they'll, they'll take that into account. And so, yeah. Okay. Cannot agree with you more. Yeah. Experience is definitely <laughs> yeah. like a very big predictor of what you want and what you don't want. Definitely. Yeah. So again, it really does boil down back to the experience. Like, don't just go say, oh, I, I take some boxes. Like, like we mentioned before, ticking boxes is usually not the right way to go. You'll end up bitter and miserable. And then you'll wish that you actually uh, reflected more on your experiences and learned more about yourself because these four years are where you're going to build yourself up for your future. Yeah. So uh, we've uh, gone through all the pre-collected questions. Now let's move on to the live questions from the audience. So let's start off with a question about ECOF. So what's the difference between taking ECOF and double majoring in economics and finance? And uh, so definitely this question is for Tony and so yeah, you can address I guess that. So, yeah. uh, more, more, more quantitative, uh, in terms of more quantitative, I can say more math. Uh, so if you look at, uh, I, I was, uh, I just posted uh, the link on the courses descriptions of the course uh, was talking about uh, between ECOF and Econ and Finance because ECOF is a program itself so we cannot take uh, another major in ECOF. ECOF is a major so uh, so it's more uh, uh, so uh, the choice is uh, it's more limited I would say you have a really well structured course you don't have many free elective to choose for ECOF but at the same time it's more quantitative and more uh, math driven that it, it depends, you still have a first year to see whether math driven or quantitative is your thing. You can try it in the first year to see because, but it definitely helps me when I was uh, handling data, uh, doing data analysis and now studying data science because the more the further you go, uh, the quicker, the, the intensity is higher in math. If you go to data science or more uh, data related subjects that it's, it's, a, it's about the directions that you want to go after you graduate. So I would say it's, it's in one words, uh, quantitative math driven, but, and then you will, and then you will further ask me, you will, you will further ask me what, 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 what is, what is more math driven? Try it in uh, the year one, try it in the calculus course. Uh, it, it's compulsory for everyone. Try the calculus course in year one to see how comfortable you are with the calculus. If you are comfortable with it, then, then that's more math driven. If you're not comfortable with it, the math difference or that intensity of math difference doesn't suit you. Then you can, you can, uh, that, 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 that's the difference. Then you can tell, but in, in, in words, we, we cannot tell you the difference. You can, you can you experience it in the first year and you will see. That's good, that's good. 
So on to the next question. So we, again, we touched on this one a little bit before, but let's go into a little bit more detail. So are there any student exchange programs and do they need specific credits to have the opportunities to join? So I think a, a few of us actually have been on internships. Uh, sorry, I forgot the word. I'm like blanking. Exchange programs. Yeah. <laughs> so would any of you like to share your experience with them? Uh, yeah, I... Because when before I joined UST, I, I already want to go to exchange. So I, I did look at the website of UST. So you can look at that and two components. Uh, one is the it's about demand and supply, right? You can got a lot of SKUs. And then they have uh, how do they select the candidates is about two things, uh, interviews and your grades. And uh, yeah, that that's the that's the requirement because there's limited quotas for each each overseas schools. And you have to fight for that. Yeah. And it's, it's not compulsory to, to go for exchange, except GBUS. Chris can add on that. And the second part is uh, credits. So uh, you can exchange your credits. You can exchange your credits. So what you study in that overseas school, you can put all the course credits to your uh, to your HKUST program. And then you, uh, you won't need you to take another extra se semester in Hong Kong to, 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 to get back the course. So, uh, so it's, you can transfer the credit. So yeah, you, you, you don't worry about the, the credit transfer. Uh, the, 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 the staff will help you on that, yeah. I can walk you guys through uh, the process a little bit. So what would happen is if you want to go on exchange, you will submit a list, <clears throat> you will submit a list of 10 schools to um, the staff and they will process it and then they will arrange for an interview. And so what they would do is they will ask you why did you put these 10 schools on the list? And literally they will ask you that. Like I remember sitting in the interview and they would ask me, oh, I see that you put this school for your choice number seven. Why did you put it for number seven, not number six or number three? And so I had to really kind of like think, think back and remember why I chose that school to begin with. I personally chose the schools in Europe because I really wanted to, to live and travel in Europe um, for itself. So I put all Europe, European schools there. Um, and then what will happen next is they will look at your interview performance and your grades, taking into account what Tony said, then they will offer you um, one of the choices that you put down and then you can choose to accept or reject it. And then if you accept it, then you'll be going next semester. So bear in mind that um, credits will be transferred back to UST. And at the same time, you are paying the school fees in HKUST in Hong Kong, but you're traveling, I mean, you're studying in another school. So that's a very good deal for local students. That that's an awesome deal. That's why that's why I, I put all I put all the schools in you. I put all the US school in, in a list. Yeah. And then yeah, then interviewers ask why US why, why the school I say I choose the United States. And so that's why I put all the schools in, in the list. So so it's it's about yeah it's what what's sad is about why every every interviewers or every people every person that we met with when when we come questions, we also ask why. So just uh, prepare for the reasons on doing that, then you will be good. Yeah, just to add on a little bit to the admission criteria for each of the schools, definitely uh, some of you will be very concerned about like uh, how high, how, how, how good should I be uh, academically to be able to get there. So HKUST actually provides a lot of assistance. There's a lot of transparency around uh, the average grade that people applying there uh, have. Uh, so definitely don't worry about that. You can just uh, Re uh, take reference to the website. Maybe uh, someone could uh, put it in the chat box and you can like learn more about Jeff the schools themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's move on to another question. So um, uh, some someone asked, I got an offer with a major in e economics. Uh, can I transfer or take a second degree in quantitative finance? So I think, uh, so firstly, uh, there is a uh, MSE, I think it's major selection uh, exercise that you can take part in to get into the, uh, another major if you want to get into quantitative finance. I'm not very sure if you can uh, double major these two courses. So uh, this is a, quite an admission related question, but I hope uh, just, just take note that uh, there's the major selection exercise, which will give you sort of a second chance to uh, choose the thing that you're most interested in. Yeah. So again, um, like on the topic of majors, someone else had asked uh, that if 
they've applied for two individual majors and can they then change their major to a dual major in the future? And I believe the answer is yes, if I'm understanding correctly. So if you've applied for two separate majors, so for example, like when I applied, I had applied um, to the management major and the marketing major separately. Um, when I actually went into USD though, um, I ended up going for my first major in marketing. And then after the second year, or after the third year, <laughs> can't remember exactly when, I then added management as the second major. So you can definitely like create your own pathway. So I think the majority of us here actually did double majors, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's quite a common practice, especially with business school students. So either to do double major or a major and a minor like Seth did, um, or as Tony did to do like ECOF or um, one of those other dual degree programs. Okay. So and anyone want to add on to that? If not, then we can move on to the next question. So. Uh, so, uh, so there's a question that is very experiential. So uh, uh, the person says, I got an offer from the Business and Management School, SBM, uh, and what will the course typically be about in year one? So business core courses, and then what do we learn in first year business and management major? So any of you want to chime in about that? What do you learn in first year? Yeah. Uh, so we thought we, we will talk about that just all the you look at the majors. So year one is all the introductory course to do those majors, accounting, marketing, operation management, economics, um, SAS. And then some, I would say it's a common course, some electives come uh, different. And that's why I'm saying there's one calculus course is compulsory. And you, you, you can taste the map of, 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 of universities. And then you can do, we, can, we have some humanity courses is, is the whole year one thing is introductory to, to universities actually. So you can take, you can take you, you, your course business and management, but at the same time, you can have a taste on different uh, school, like school of engineering or school of science, they're, 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 they're free electives. So uh, the course structure will typically like that. Uh, I, I guess Jess will post a link on, 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 on the, or the course code or the details to break down of that, yeah. Um, I, I do want oh, to add that um, all students will be assigned to an academic advisor. So like, do not worry that you might take the wrong course or something because some courses will be pre-registered to you and then you can like add on like other courses and you can always take advice from your academic advisor. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say that if I think back to what I learned in my first year, I think I remember that I learned that I hate accounting. I like <laughs> I hate friends and I want to go on exchange. That's what I learned in my first year. So what I'm trying to say yeah. is that um, these core courses are a great way for you to get to know what you want to do, what majors you want to do, what you want to do in your four years of university. But to be honest, like I don't remember much about these core courses other than those things. So it's yeah, it's gonna be a lot of different topics, but it's also gonna be very uh, rather shallow, um, but broad so that you can kind of figure out what you wanna do. On top of that, I think in addition to courses, it's also the time for you to adapt with university, with Hong Kong, if you're an international student and also with USD. So there will be some programs, events hold by the school. Uh, and I think it's also the time for you to get to know people around you. Say if you live in a dorm, it's also a time for you to adapt there, uh, find some community, try different things, and it's time to settle. I think even like going beyond just like the academics and like getting to know Hong Kong, getting to know the university, like there's also extracurricular activities like that we haven't touched on yet, um, but there's a lot of them. Like we have a lot of different societies and everything on campus. So year one is basically your best opportunity to basically like go around and experiment with the different societies and try to get a lot of friends um, and all of that. So I think year one is definitely the best opportunity for that. Yep. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So this is um, very, a very interesting question. So I suspect that UG business schools are generally oversaturated with people. And what I'm mainly concerned about is how competitive would I become after joining HKUSD's business school? And can anyone provide a case of failure if there are any? From, um, can I answer these questions? Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, so 
I would say oversaturate people. Not really. We um, we are. We, I don't know what 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 what's the cap. Uh, what 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 was the intake this year? But it's not that oversaturated if you compare other schools. Uh, and then how competitive? Uh, I guess uh, or the sharing with us about a career and after the career after graduating from HKUST, I I would say it's pretty uh is it's it's pretty competitive. Hello, uh, it's pretty competitive uh, in Hong Kong and around the world, I would say. So, uh, and then the case of failure is about how you define failure. I, I mean, you can see we all fail or you, you can see we are all good. It's about the definitions of failure by yourself. I, 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 yeah, because this university is a thing that you explore yourself and you want to taste different things. And then after you're tasting it and what's the next step and what do you want to try in your life? That's, that's the thing. So I would say uh, it's about uh, keep to trying, learn something and improve yourself. And that's not a failure for me, or I, I'm sure that's not failure for all of us. So, so that's why I think it's competitive. Uh, the course is competitive and you're competitive if you really spend your time well in the four years in HKUST. And then I don't think it's oversaturated if you, if you compare all the intakes with other schools or other college around the world. So um, that's my that's my answer. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. So uh, let's move on to a question that I, I think is for Seth actually. So uh, uh, the person asks, how much math is involved in the marketing course? Not many, like at this <laughs> action. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I took it. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what did he ask? What, what did he ask? How much math? Yeah, how much math is uh, in, involved in the course itself? Maybe, maybe Seth can oh. also talk about like other yeah. things that are required for performing well in marketing, I guess. Yeah, so marketing is really about group work. So at its peak, I think I had seven group works going on at the same time in one semester. So it's about time management. Like how, when do you meet your group? Uh, when do you set deadlines? How do you work together as a group? Um, how do you meet up together? Um, and build friendship as well from, from those group works. Um, so I can give a few examples. I think one of the projects that we worked on was um, back then the mobile brand HTC. So how do you how do you help them rebrand themselves? And you do an analysis of of what they're doing well, what they're doing bad. Um, the other time we did um, a case on restaurant groups in Hong Kong. So I'm not sure if you guys know about Greyhound um, and Gaia Group like Glass House and Greenhouse. So we did analysis of all the brands that uh, was under Gaia Group and proposed a new brand. And so our team would have to do a like 30 minute pitch to the class um, to say why we want to launch this brand, how it fits in with the rest of the portfolio, what is the target audience and uh, what kind of presentation tactics that we were gonna use. So I remember that we actually printed out like our very own branded like table covers um, for the class. So I kind of like let them picture that they're actually sitting in that restaurant itself. Um, the other time we also worked for Qingdao. So that, that case was on Qingdao. How do you rebrand Qingdao to make it more internationally branded and recognizable? So for example, we suggested a few things instead of having the Chinese word on it, make it just pure English, um, go for different uh, types of beer that, you know, other markets would like to drink, like more stout beer or come up with um, like a partnership with like a surfing brand um, and we actually brought the beer into class <laughs> and no. bribed the students <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> to, to be able to have a good audience um, so yeah I, I feel like marketing is really fun all the time yeah just another quick question for you is uh, what job can you choose after graduating from marketing so I did not go for a typical marketing major job because I'm actually working in operations right now. Um, funny story because operations is a lot of quite a bit of math. So I don't know why the math just comes back and haunt me. Um, but to be honest, like it just goes back to the whole point of saying that like your major, it's not really the deciding factor of your career. It really comes down to your mindset, how fast you adapt to different things, how fast you learn, um, how well you work with other group members. Um, how do you manage expectations from other teams and your boss? And how do you deliver, how do you deliver work that um, everyone else is looking for? And so 
that is the most important thing that you can learn from your university years. It's not, it doesn't really boil down to what major you are. Um, and yeah, that's my take from it. Yeah, I, I think I can add on to that as well. So like, I'm also a marketing graduate. Um, and I 100% agree with that. I did not go into a traditional marketing job either. Um, I started off in customer success, which is mainly about like managing customer relationships. And so it was kind of the parts that I liked about marketing what was that kind of like customer contact, customer relationship element to marketing, the creativity of marketing. And those are the kind of skills and the elements of marketing that I really enjoyed. And so that's what I used to kind of figure out what I wanted to do as a future career. So that's why I really enjoyed my time as customer success associate. Um, and now I'm working more on content creation, which is all about basically utilizing that creative element um, to produce the marketing materials to help our marketing team basically market the product. So yeah. I think moving on to the next question, um, did anyone complete an A-level course to get into HKUSD? And if yes, could you please share your experience with that? Um, so I took A-levels uh, back in Indonesia and it was actually pretty great. I think because in A-levels, I think it's quite similar to what um, I'm experiencing now in HKUSD because um, I don't know about um, other schools but my school provided like different courses and like we can take which um, subject that we want to do so it's pretty similar to HKUSD so like they will provide a lot of courses and then we can choose and um, like the trend uh, if you're asking about the transition it's actually not that hard um, and it's still very basic I think not only for A level students I think for like all qualifications because like all of the courses uh, especially in the first years still pretty basic you're still like trying to learn about like what you like you want to have a taste of like what this major um, is all about and yeah I think like transition wise it's not as hard and I think it's pretty similar um, to what you learn in A levels. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Um, just uh, someone also asked about uh, the IB grade boundary just now, I, I noticed. So a lot of people want to know what the transition is like or the admission requirements. And uh, for IB, it will be specific to your own offer. So they will give you the, uh, the total score that you need to get through to get past that. I'm not sure about any special cases. Perhaps the admission officers can answer that in the next section. So, uh, Here's a pretty important question for uh, international students. So uh, the person asked, what is the percentage of international students at uh, HKUST? So perhaps uh, the admission officers can uh, give us a statistic in the chat box quickly down below. Yeah. But as far as I know, uh, when it comes to experience, uh, there's a lot of different societies for, our, for each uh, nationality. So I know there's a German society, there's like a, probably a, a Japanese, uh, there's a Taiwanese society. Yeah. So you won't find, uh, you won't find yourself lonely at HKUST. It's international. At, at the same time, there's a lot of places where you can find your own belonging to. So others can also share about your experience. Yeah. Um, I would say it's true as an international student, uh, I won't lie that in the beginning, I have that impression when I see the poster and a lot of it are written in Cantonese. I was like, oh my God, uh, where will I fit in? But then it's true that there are, uh, I would say like international societies or uh, like specific nationalities, say Southeast Asia and whatever. And on top of that, there's that uh, case, comp say a case competition uh, that I joined, that I organized with CD CD Bank with HKUSD. And for that kind of event, it doesn't require you to speak Cantonese or like purely international. So you get to mix with like between local and non-local. So um, I would say it's not that huge of a barrier for you to participate in extracurricular. Awesome, awesome. So let's move on to the next question then. So what is the main language with um, which the professors and students communicate in? Is it English or is it Cantonese? English, yeah, <laughs> English. So we, we speak English uh, most of the time, yeah. 
because we we have an international audience so we are from different backgrounds so english is the main language so don't don't worry about that yeah english is the this is the key language that we communicate with professors yeah yeah and some professors will be open to speaking their own uh, native language if you want to uh, build closer relationships with their professors. I know of a few of my uh, friends who uh, like uh, got to know their professors really well and they got a lot more research opportunities. So this might not be necessarily related to business and management, but uh, de there definitely will be a lot of benefit to uh, just uh, knowing your professors better, uh, professors better and then asking what you can help out with. And then potentially you can come up with really interesting opportunities. Yeah. So, Ah, here's another question about marketing. So uh, the person says, I am kind of interested in the marketing course and will be studying a business management. Uh, oh, oh uh, the, per the question is asking, uh, will studying uh, business management prepare you better for the marketing course instead of econ? Yeah, so is, yeah. So I'm not really sure I understand the question correctly. Um... Business. Yeah, I'll, I'll repeat it. Yeah, because uh, just I'll, I'll rephrase it a bit. So the person okay. is asking if uh, studying management will prepare you better for uh, marketing uh, compared to studying economics to prepare yourself for marketing. You mean so, before? You mean before? Like you, before you know, majoring in marketing? Studying. I think is the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm guessing that uh, the person is asking about the knowledge overlap between like uh, management and marketing versus economics and marketing, I think. There, so I can tell you that there's no overlap between econ and marketing because they're very different things. Uh, econ, you're studying how companies function. You're studying how economies function, like different economies function, different countries are trading with one another. So that has nothing to do with marketing. Um, management, maybe a little bit. I mean, it comes down to people skills, communication skills. So if I'm understanding your question correctly, I, I would say management has more to do with marketing than econ. Yeah. I, mean, I think I can also add to that. So, I mean, if you're also talking about like what courses you should be studying in high school before you start university as well, like whether you should be studying a business management course versus economics, I think business management course would give you a little bit more introductory and foundational knowledge knowledge about marketing. Um, but quite frankly, I took the business management course in IB, for example, and yes, it gave me a little bit more of a foundation, but it was not essential or like required for me to have that introductory knowledge. So like the first year of UST and the, all those introductory courses are basically geared towards giving you that foundation knowledge. Um, so you don't necessarily need to. I also want to say that one of the most heard um, phrases of my first classes um, in my year one um, by the professors, they will come into class and be like, forget all you learned in high school. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so uh, someone asked about taking a gap year. Uh, so before getting into the <laughs> university, I already get uh, considered a gap year. Okay, uh, also address the differ the differing aspect. So uh, the person asked more specifically if taking a gap year will have a negative effect on job seeking. I'm not very sure uh, about answering this question because um, it really depends on what you do during the gap year, right? Instead of instead of taking a whole year off, just being free, you could instead be actually looking for a job or uh, going for part time and all of that. So maybe I am uh, not understanding your question fully, but uh, it really just comes down to um, what you do during the gap year. You can expand your knowledge in other areas. For example, you want to learn more about Bloomberg Terminal, then maybe. <laughs> do some research on your own and just uh yeah just just develop yourself throughout these four years and that's all that matters it doesn't really matter yeah i'll, I'll, I'll say is again is the question is why you want to take a gap year and then and what do you do in a gap year and that's the question because someone as, as how about you define gap year someone uh gap year means you take a year off someone is they take a year to travel someone is taking a year to to do a placement, do a full full two time placement for twelve months. It depends on what you're doing, and it's about a story that you want to tell to the people that why you take and how you take it. That's that's the key. Yeah, and then just a little bit more on uh, the uh, the deferring question, and uh, I think 
deferring is definitely an option at HKUST. A lot of people actually uh, in like in, in GBUS, I know a lot of people who deferred just to get a better graduate offer. And it's actually uh, a not 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 necessarily a common thing. I'm not. I don't have the like uh, hard statistics about that. But I think there's no stigma around deferring. It, it it's a welcoming thing if you need to do it to get a better graduate offer and to develop. If you think you have to develop yourself a little bit longer before you jump into the job market, then feel free to do that. HSC is there to facilitate you. Yeah. All right. So moving on, our next question is about like the flexibility of the, of your curriculum. So someone is asking, the curriculum can be personalized really deeply, and will academic advisors help us to build our education in the most efficient way, or what should we know about it now? Um, they, they will definitely help. Just the attitude, send an email, ask them if you have any questions, send an email to ask them. And what should we know about now? I would say, yeah, know about if you got an offer, know about the people, send an email, ask them. And and Seth has got a good point. It's like, forget what is what you think and what you learn in high school. Just just send an email to 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 communicate. Communication is the key. What we learn, uh, what I learned from college is communications. How find a way to effectively communicate with people. How to interacting is is the key thing. So you don't need many. Uh, you don't need to think about a curriculum that much right now. So keep uh, keep in. Keep, keep, the, keep the information and ask the right question is the key. Okay, so um, actually a lot of your questions uh, we, we saw in the chat box just now are related to admission. So don't worry, your question will be addressed later uh, by yeah. HKSD admission officers. So we'll move on. We'll just finish off with a, I guess, a more experiential question for all of you. So uh, after describing your successes, could uh, anyone perhaps discuss some failures and uh, what were some of your ups and downs throughout your uni life and how did HKSD help? I think speaking about failures, I remember I, I was going to work in a startup, which was founded by an HKUST alumni. And I worked there for about two weeks. But somehow, so it was really far away. It took me um, maybe an hour and a half to go there, an hour and a half to come back. But when I got there, they were really busy. They really they didn't really have time to teach me or to to talk to me about you know what what's going on in the business and two weeks later they realized that it was kind of a waste of time on both sides because they they don't have time for me and i'm only doing little tasks for them after traveling so far away and so i guess you can call it a failure that it didn't work out um but it wasn't bitter or anything like you know we we still we still keep keep other in touch and like i mean sometimes if stuff doesn't work out but you can't learn from your failures like you know is that really the job that you want to look for or should i have spoken to the founder more before i apply to this job and understand like what they can really offer me and so it could be a failure not really a failure but it was one of the experiences that you know got cut short I see a frown on Tony's face. I think it, because it, it touches back on his definition of failure. I think uh, when it comes to just life in general or job life in general, there really isn't much failure. Like if, if you, it, it all comes down to if you get dumbed down forever by your failures, right? But if you learn something from it, that's all that matters. I think. Yeah, because when I look at the terms of failure, say, it's tough. It, I would say lots of ups and downs in, in your in, in university life because um, because it's, diff it's different from what traditional uh, secondary school, high school, all is well structured, right? But the university is different, it's free. So, uh, so many company, many decisions you have to take for yourself. Sometimes you, you, will, you will question when some, something bad happens, you will, judge, you, you will question yourself. Is it a good decision? Is it a bad decision? Many failures happen. Uh, for, example, I, for example, I got an offer from a management consultant internship and they, they retract it. And then that that's a failure for me. But and then that's that's that I was really sad at that time. But it, lots of ups and downs. But when you look back, it's how is how well you deal with failures. How well you turn the failures into an opportunity to grow. 
and because even we 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 graduated we graduated from 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 HKUSD, we still have a lot of ups and downs in our life. But it's the way how you handle it. HKUSD definitely help. They have career advisors. They have different uh, teams, staff, professionals, professors to support you. Uh, if you feel uh, down or sad, just talk with them and. And it's how it's the, it's the way how to open up yourself to to communicate. I mean that that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, I think I can also add on like a little bit to that. So, again, it is how you define failure and everything as well. But I think for me, one of the things that were was really down um, was trying to apply for jobs this year. So it wasn't exactly the best experience, you know, to have to send out so many applications and then in a lot of cases not hear anything back from companies. Um, so that was pretty difficult to kind of figure out. Um, but again, the thing that I learned from that is perseverance and, and persistence. So, you know, you can't really get bogged down by someone not replying to you or not getting the job that, you know, you really wanted to get. Um, and so just basically finding like that inner confidence and that inner strength to get back up on the horse and go reapply. Cause now, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to end up working for the company that you were meant to be at. And that's something that I really believe in. Um, and so, yeah, so just making sure that, you know, you don't get bogged down by failure and just get back up on the horse and get to it. Okay. So instead of talking about definitions and life philosophies, <laughs> let's go back to a very pragmatic question. Do employers care a lot about students' CGA in university? So this definitely varies from industry to industry. Uh, even within the industry itself, there might be like different roles might require a different CGA requirement. Uh, I know for sure that for banking, uh, CGA is definitely a thing uh, because I, I've experienced personal difficulties myself. So <laughs> don't worry about that. But maybe others can time in a little bit as well yeah yeah for the first stage they usually put it uh, on their website like the minimum cga but i think the most important thing is to be able to explain why you get that cga let's say you get a like a, a bit lower than the standard and you get to the interview and you have to explain for example you do this and that or what do you learn from that failure again back to the failure it's i mean we cannot avoid a failure, say a bad grade uh, in one of our semester, but we, we will have to explain what we learned from it and what is our action item moving forward. Okay, let's, I guess let's end this session with a question. So uh, it's almost 3.30. So let's end with a question about, uh, did any of you work and study for long periods during your four years in the in the HKUSD, yeah. Uh, I did about four months working and studying at the same time. So Monday, Tuesdays, I would go to class. Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, I would go to work. I uh, I, I I did it too. I did it too. I did like a six month. I did have a final year. I I spent like Monday, Tuesday in school, and then. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, working uh, an internship, kind of like that. But it's 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 tough to manage the time. Is is you have to learn how to manage your time well. On that, it's not easy. I would say, yeah. Yeah, I did a remote uh, remote working for four four or five months in one of the semester, and I also did a volunteering uh, for a couple months during my exchange time in San Diego. Um, I would say it's a trade-off between the time you work, the time you hang out with your friends, the time you uh, like study and also join organization. And I think, yeah, it's, I mean, besides learning from internship or working part-time, I think it's also valuable to join student society, um, learning from your peers. Just make sure you don't regret uh, missing out on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you for addressing the question. So actually I came across a pretty interesting question just now. I just want to quickly finish our session off with this question. So um, uh, the person wants to clarify myth. Uh, so recently, uh, before it has been University of Stress and Tension and more, more recently, I'm not sure if I should say this, but uh, University of Suicide and, and Tragedy. Sheesh. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys think it's true or yeah, just chime in a little bit. 
it all comes down to your mindset, um, stress and tension. I mean, yes, at times it's stressful, but at times I look at the ocean right by the campus and I'm like, this is the moment where I have zero stress, <laughs> you know, um, or I'm hanging out with my friends. So I really, it really comes down to your time management, how you look at the whole thing. Um, and hey, like stress and tension isn't always bad. Like it kind of forces you to grow. So I wouldn't really think that it's a negative thing. Yeah, and, and just to add a little bit, because a lot of my peers are constantly under high stress because of the major's nature, people are very competitive. And uh, the one thing I want to uh, want all of you to note of is HQST does have counselors in their in the campus. And I've, I've heard a lot of my friends uh, go ask for their assistance, just uh, make a phone call, just say, I want to meet at this time. And they also said that the counselors have been pretty helpful. And I think that uh, at HQST, high stress does push you to be an excellent uh, candidate for a lot of industries. But at the same time, you do need to uh, seek help if you think you can manage uh, stress. Yeah. So they do offer a lot of assistance at HQST. I've heard about the University of Sunshine and Tomorrow. That's yeah. the one that I use. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have to be so grim. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll end uh, the, the session about uh, career and uh, programs. And so thank you all for your questions and thank you speakers for sharing your valuable insight. And we'll now move on to the admission consultation section. Uh, offer holders and applicants will be assigned to your respective breakout rooms where our admission officers will be able to address admission related questions. So uh, we will now be opening up the two breakout rooms and please join the breakout room that is right for you. Uh, thank you all for joining us again and have a wonderful day. I'll be sticking around to help out in case of any difficulties. So just give me a moment to open the breakout rooms. Thanks guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot.